Praise God. Let's stand this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and get this service kicked off. Hallelujah. Father, we just love you today, God. We thank you for blessing us, Lord. And God, as we come together to worship you and to magnify you this morning, God, I pray that each one of us would just open our heart, to, and God, that we would pour out before you, Father. And God, as we pour out, Father, that you would pour in, Lord. God, just do something in our lives today, Father, and we'll give you praise, we'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. You called out into darkness. You reached out to save us. You conquered the grave. You crossed the divide. Lost in our sin, you made us alive. How can we ever hold it inside? We can't hold back. We're gonna lift you high, high. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. Never gonna stop singing. Never gonna stop singing. No longer bound in chains You rescued me And called me by name You conquered the grave You crossed the divide Lost in our sin You made us alive How can we ever hold it inside? We can't hold back we're gonna lift you high, high Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire Voices unite, make it louder, louder We're never gonna stop singing We're never gonna stop singing Every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing Every knee we will bow to the risen King, lift him up, lift him up. We're never gonna stop singing. Never gonna stop. Every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow. To the risen King, lift him up, lift him up. We're never gonna stop singing. Never gonna stop. Hi, hi. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire Voices unite, make it louder, louder Never gonna stop singing Never gonna stop singing Disillusioned, I was lost and insecure. Still, mercy fought for my attention. You were waiting at the door, and I let you in. Trading your life. For my offenses, for my redemption, you carried all the blame. Breaking the curse of our condition, perfection took our place.
lie forgiven There is nothing that can take this love away My only desire My sole ambition Is to love you just the
dedicate my life to worship you. Hallelujah. How many of you want to worship the Lord this morning? How many of you love worshiping the Lord? Amen. I love worshiping the Lord more than I love doing anything else. It just brings, it brings a, a spirit inside of me. It stirs the spirit inside of me. And the next thing I know, I start smiling, rejoicing, getting excited. Amen. I am grateful for what God has done. But I was thinking in the song that they sang before that about the exchange. And we're going to sing this last one one more time. But how many of you know that, that Jesus did something for you when he went through the sacrifice that he went through? He made a way for you to exchange some things. You can exchange your sorrows. You can exchange your pain. You can exchange death. You can exchange all types of things through the work that Jesus did. And I believe that sometimes we come to church and we fail to make an exchange, right? If I told you that if you gave me a dollar this morning, I'd give you a thousand, how many of y'all would give me a dollar? Some of y'all would say, I ain't trading my dollar. I like my dollar. I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody said, I will give you a thousand dollars for a dollar, I would be running to that person and making that exchange. And some of you guys are holding on to some things that you need to let go because God's got better things for you. How many of y'all believe that this morning? That God has got something better for you. So exchange it. How do we exchange it? We call upon his name and we say, God, you know what? I got this issue. I got this thing that's going on in my life. And I know that the stripes that you pour upon your back were for our healing. And I need healing this morning. God, I know that you have uh, uh, went through the, the cross and you laid down your life so I could have life and have it more abundantly so that I could be saved and on my way to heaven. How many of you know that those are some good things that we need to exchange? Amen. But the only way we can do that is if we step up to the exchange table. Amen. And so we're going to sing this last song one more time. And what I want you to do is if you're going through something in life, I just want you to worship God. Lay your problem aside. Lay the things that's been going on in your life aside and just get in this one moment, in this one, at this one time. And just say, God, I want to worship you. Come on, church. Let's worship him this morning. Let's be worshipers. Let's love to worship the Lord. Hallelujah.
Father, we just love you this morning, God. Father, we just love your presence, Lord. God, we desire your presence. Father, we just pray right now that you would just inhabit our praises. Father, that we would just feel, God, your presence this morning, Lord. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? He's so worthy. Yes, Lord. Praise God. You know, you could sing that song really two ways. I'm a lover of your presence, but how many of you know that God is a lover of your presence? Yeah. Amen. You may be seated this morning, but I want you to think about this, that if you study the book of Revelation, you will find that there is continual worship, nonstop, 24-7 worship. And God loves to hear his people worship him how many of y'all know that the bible even goes as far to tell us that when we don't what happens rocks cry out in our place so we need to be worshipers we need to worship the lord because he's been good to us amen how many of you like it when someone likes when you're there right i, I don't want to be the guy that walks in the room and somebody says oh i don't like that guy i don't want to be in his presence i'm sure it's happened but they haven't told me I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> but how many of you like it when you walk in the room, Brother Aaron, and everybody's like, hey, man, this is Brother Aaron. It's good to see you. Right? That, that's how I want to be with God. I want God to say, hey, there, there's Brother Jordan, man. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's worshiping this, this morning, right? So we need to get back to worshiping the Lord. I don't want to uh, dwell on that too long. But uh, I want to make some announcements that we're going to receive our offers. Good to have our visitors with us this morning. Good to see all of y'all. It's good to have the Hatcher family with us. Uh, we're looking forward to his ministry in a little while as he throws his Bible on the floor. Uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to what he's going to be delivering to us in just a moment. But um, we are going to be receiving donations of children's books. And uh, they don't have to be new. They can be used, but make sure they're readable. Um, we have a missionary in Pakistan that we're going to be sending these books to, and the pastor is asking for kids' books. They have a school, and we want to, to bless. And, and so if you have some old kids' books laying around your house somewhere, or if you want to go buy new ones and bring them, we have a plastic tub set up in the foyer, and we would love to be able to bless this missionary and this pastor with these books. So keep that in mind. Friday night is our men's fellowship, 7 o'clock in the fellowship hall. And our men's leader says, bring chicken. Rotisserie, grilled, barbecued, uh, blackened, it don't matter, just bring chicken. And my favorite, fried. Amen. Uh, ladies meeting on the 10th, keep that in mind after the service. And then we are going to be accepting donations of candy for our fall festival that will be in the gym at the end of the month. And the most pressing announcement is tonight is a youth rally right here at our church. Brother Hatcher is going to be preaching, and uh, we're going to introduce those, these guys in just a moment. They're our newly elected district youth directors, and we are happy to have them, and we look forward to what God is going to do in their lives and the lives of all of our young people across the district. But youth rally tonight at 6 p.m., come out and be a part of that. 
and uh, I know you will be blessed. With that said, we're going to go ahead and receive the offering this morning. And um, is Sierra in here? She's in the back. Okay, I need you to get her at the end of the service for me, okay? Praise God. All right, let's pray over the offering. Father, we just thank you, God, for blessing us. God, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. And it was re- as we receive the tithes and the offering this morning, I pray, God, your blessings upon it. And, God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, at this time, I want the Hatchers to come up. I know she's going to be singing a song for us, and I think he's going to be preaching for us here in a mem- moment. So if you guys want to come on, we're going to turn this service over to you guys. Let's give them a hand, our newly elected district youth directors of the East Texas District Pentecostal Church of God. And uh, we, are, we are proud to have these guys. I, I, I've heard a lot about them. I told them depends on how he preaches, on how much he gets this morning. So, uh, so we'll see how he does, but we love these guys, and we're honored to have you this morning. Thank you, brother. We'll give your pastor a hand this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be here, and I was a little nervous about preaching at Baytown behind uh, Pastor Jordan's pulpit, but then I found out that uh, Monroe was the youth pastor, so I said, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> Amen, but we are, I do want to thank the pastor for opening the pulpit. It's an honor. Whenever a pastor allows any ministers to speak, because they do guard the pulpit, and there's a reason for that, and when they allow you to speak and uh, minister at a church, it's an, always an honor, and we thank you for that. Uh, it's good to be here tonight. As the uh, pastor says, we have our youth rally tonight. Six o'clock, please come and support the youth. Amen. It's for the young and the young at heart. Amen. We want to minister tonight, and we're going to have a good time uh, this evening. This uh, morning, though, my wife is going to sing a, a special for you. I told her everything she knows about singing. So when you hear her sing, just know that I had something to do with that. Amen. But worship her as she comes forth. Y'all just stay away from him because apparently lightning will be striking sometime soon. So it is an honor and a privilege to be with you guys. Um, who, how many ladies were at the retreat this weekend? Yes. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed hanging out with you guys this weekend, and it is, again, a pleasure to be with you and your husbands and your families today. Um, I just want to say this, if it's all right. Pastor, is it okay if I exhort them? Okay. Um, I appreciate the worship team. I always appreciate the pastor because the man and woman of God. But my heart, my, my area of ministry is worship, and I have been behind many pulpits, many platforms leading worship. But this, this morning, wow, that's amazing. It was beautiful. And not only, you know, there's one thing to have talent, and then there's another thing to have an anointing. But when you have both of them combined, man, there's no stopping. There's no stopping it. And so I just greatly appreciate the worship team, for your obedience, for your willingness, your sacrifice, the times that you put in to um, practice, all the things that you guys, that you do. I appreciate that. And if I appreciate that, how much more does our Heavenly Father appreciate that? Amen. Give him a round of praise. You know, I, I've, I'll tell my age because I don't care. Um, I will be 40 next month. And Um, so I've been in ministry my entire life as a PK and now a pastor's wife. I've traveled in ministry and I'm still never, ever pastor. I'm never, ever, never ceases to amaze me how God orchestrates a service. When you have leaders and stuff that have prayed, that have asked God to lead them and guide them, it just, it never fails. He shows up. Pastor Terry asked me, he was like, hey, I'm going to get you to sing. And I was like, oh, Lord, I don't have a whole lot of tracks, you know, kind of a deal and stuff. And apparently tracks are a thing of I need to get into the 21st century is what I was told. But I don't have a whole lot in my um, in my file, so to speak. And I was like, Lord, this is an old song. I don't know. But little did I know that God had something else already planned Because everything that you guys sang this morning leads right into the song that the Lord gave me to sing this morning. It's my desire. It's who I am. The worship, 
being in his presence. That's who I am. And so I was asking the Lord this morning, and I, I thought, you know, Lord, let me give them a scripture. And I turned to Psalms 37, um, Psalms 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight. I was like, Lord, what does delight mean? Like, for real, what does it mean? So I looked it up. And delight meant with great pleasure. With great pleasure. With great pleasure. It's my great pleasure in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. What is a desire? Desire is a strong feeling of wanting something or wishing for something to happen. I don't know about you, but it is my desire for his presence. It's my desire to live for him the way he wants me to live. Amen. Amen. Be blessed this morning. If you know, it is an older song. If you know it, sing with me. Amen. Hopefully we got this going. If you could just turn that sucker up. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live just for Him. Though often I fail, brought Him a change. It's my It's my desire. 
Amen. We're about to get into the word. If we we'll go ahead and stand to your feet. Difficult passage to find today be Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> if you can't find that, come up here, we'll lay hands on you. Amen. Let's go ahead and give the Lord some worship this, this morning. We, we, God, has God been good to you? Has God ever did anything for you? you the, the person in front of you, beside you, may not know what God has done for you, but you know what he's done for you. He knows what he's done for you. Want, right now, I want you to just lift your hands up and just praise him and thank him for his goodness. He's been so merciful to us. He has been gracious to us. He has provided for us. He has loved us. He has attended to our prayers, to our every need. He has sent his only begotten son that we may be saved because we stood guilty before him, but he made a way of escape through his son, Jesus Christ. When you have called upon him, when you needed finances, miracles, and thank him to come through for you, he came through and answered prayer. Give him a praise worthy of who he is. Your Bible says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. That means a great God deserves great praise. Hallelujah. God, you are good. Hallelujah. We love you this morning. We love you. We can't thank you enough. As Pastor just alluded to a while ago, when you study Revelations, you see all kinds of activities in heaven. And one thing that you see, they see the angels worshiping. He says they, they never stop praising him. They keep saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They praise him, they honor him, and they worship him, and they do not cease. Here's a challenge for you and me. Do not stop praising him. Nancy Harmon told us one thing. She said, there's only two times you praise God, when you feel like it and when you don't. <laughs> Your praise should not be mitigated based on how you feel. Who he is is who he is, and that doesn't change based on if it's a good day, if it's a bad day, if you're on the mountain or if you're in the valley. He's always good, amen? He's always good and always deserving of all of our praise, amen? God, you are so good, hallelujah, and we love you. We're going to get, if you grab your Bibles, you can remain standing as we read the Word of God. Genesis chapter 1, we'll be reading verses 26 through 29. I'll be reading out of New King James this morning. We're talking about the provision of God. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. The word says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Pay attention to verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth. And every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Father, we are so thankful for your word. We thank you that your presence has already been here. We thank you for the worship that has gone up this morning. We thank you that you are making yourself evident and known right now. I pray that you know me to give the word as you have given it to me. Hallelujah. And prepare our hearts to receive it, God, that will bring forth much fruit. We give you all praise, honor, and glory for all that you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may go ahead and be seated. I want you to raise your hand if you have a need. You just have a need. And you need God to do something about it. If you could have done something about it, you've already done it. It's a need that only God can handle. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk about that this morning. One of the things I love about why I love re reading and studying the Word of God because it tells you and teaches you the nature of who God is. His natures and what He's like. Growing up, I grew up in a very holiness uh, background. And, which was good on one part, but sometimes, you know, I, I got a misperception of the nature and the character of God. And when I became to serve him and love him and, and walk with my Christian walk with him through my own life, I've noticed he wasn't as harsh as some of the people made him look out to be. <laughs> he was more merciful and loving than what they portrayed him to be. Amen. I, I understand holiness and I believe in it. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see God. Amen. But people need to teach about the other aspects of his nature, that he is so gracious and he's good and he's loving. And some people are afraid to come to God because they think he'll reject them. 
Amen? That they're afraid to come to him because I, I can't live that lifestyle. And I, can't, I can't live that way, and he won't accept me. And the reason why people believe that is because they have the wrong perception of who he is. And when we go to him in prayer, we need to have the right picture of who our Heavenly Father is. If you have a need, but you're afraid that he won't give it to you, you're not going to have much faith when you pray. Right? So it helps to have the correct perception of the nature and character of who our Father is. Amen? And what gets me when I read this verse this morning, when he says, I see I have given you, he had just made man, I have given you every herb and seed which on the face of the whole earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Now you will look at the timeline when God made everything, that man was the last thing that God created. And you would think that man was the last thing on God's mind. But after he created him, he said, see, I have already given you food. I have already given you prov provision. So that tells me while he was making these things, he had man on his mind already. But the Bible says that when he made the lights in the heavens, he made them for suns and for seasons. For who? Man wasn't created yet. When he created everything, he was thinking about you. It would have been a very horrible situation if he made Adam breathe life into him and said, oh, wait a minute, Adam, i got to make some oxygen so you can breathe. <laughs> Adam would have been in a pickle if he didn't have everything he needed at that exact moment. Amen? But right when Adam breathed and came to realize in creation who God was, God has showed him, I have already made every provision you ever need. It's already here. I had you in mind before you got here. I had you. I was thinking about you. Hallelujah. Even the book of Ephesians says, even more than that, before the foundation of the world, the Lamb was slain. Before the foundation of the world, you were chosen in Christ. That means before day one, he was thinking about you. Before day one, you were chosen in Christ. That means you can't earn it and you can't lose it. He has already decided that he chose you in Christ Jesus before he did anything. That helps me because there's been times, Pastor, when I've come to a hard th uh, time in my life and I've asked God this question. You, you can raise your hand if you ask him this question too. God, do you know what I'm going through? Do you see what I'm going through right now? I thought you would have hit the, the escape button by now. What's going on? Amen. God, why are you doing this? God, do you not hear my prayer? And I asked him that one day. I said, God, do you, do you know what's going on in my life? And I put up the book, and I got to Isaiah. And right after I said that, he says, will I bring you to the birth and not cause you to bring forth? Will I bring you all the way to this point and turn around and walk away and let you go? He was telling me, I know everything that's going on with you. I know everything that's going on with you. I knew what you needed before you even asked me. I knew what you had need of before you even cried out. I knew what you needed before you knew what you needed. I got there, and I was there before you were. I was thinking about when uh, Abraham went to go offer his son Isaac for, as a sacrifice. And we know the story. He was about to sacrifice his son, and he was told to stop, and there was a ram tied up. But the Bible doesn't say when the ram was tied up. Abraham was probably walking up that mountain, grieving that he was about to sacrifice his son, and the ram was already tied up for him. The provision was waiting before Abraham even realized the provision was there. The provision was waiting. Sometimes the provision's there, we just don't yet see it. But we just have to have faith in God that he knows what he is doing and trust in the process and trust him that he knows what he's doing. And say, even though you don't see the provision yet, know that I know what's going on and I'll take care of you. And when you get to the point where you need to see the provision, I'll say, look, it is over there tied up in the bush. But in the meantime, while you don't see it, give me praise and have faith in me that I know what I'm doing. You know why God loves faith? Because it is our trust in his character. That God will do whatever he said he would do. A promise is only as good as, a, as the integrity of the person who made the promise. There are some people, you don't, don't say their names, especially if they're in this church. <laughs> if they made you a promise, you would not count on it for nothing. Why? Why? Because they fell through before. 
You've seen the character. You've seen you, the only way that's going to change is if God changes them, right? God has to do a transformation in them. There's some people, they say, hey, if you give me $100, I'll pay you back in two weeks. You know that if you give that $100, it's not coming back. Press down, shaking together, running over. <laughs> hey, man, it's not coming back. Why? Because that promise is only as good as the, as the integrity of the person who made it. But when God gives you a promise and you have faith in him, you're saying, I'm counting on your integrity that you're going to do what you said you would do. That you're going to come through no matter what the situation looks like. That if you said something, I have faith in your integrity and your character that you are going to pull through and do what you promised me that you would do. It means two things. He's not only willing to do what he said, but he's also capable of doing what he said he would do. Hallelujah. And then let's talk about some of the things that we need provision from God for. There's physical needs. Amen? There's physical provision. Uh, raise your hand if you have a, a, something going on in, in your body that you need healing for or somebody that you know. That you need God to heal. Here's the thing. God is not only willing, he is able to meet every need. We can come to God and pray. It doesn't matter what the request is, what the prayer is, he can meet any need. I'm tickled by a, a passage of Scripture in 1 Kings chapter 20. When the Syrians were warring against Israel, and Israel won the battle, and the Syrians were pagans, and they believed there's a God over everything. There's a God over the flower. There's a God over the sun. There's a God over the sky. There's a God over the water. Right? And their excuse for being whipped by the Israel was, well, their God is a God of the hills. Let's take them out to the plains and we'll win. And the prophet came and said, well, because the Syrians said that, I'm going to take them out to the plains and whip them there too. Because I'm not just the God of the hills, I'm the God of the valley. Amen? I'm the God of anything. I'm the God of the sun. I'm the one and only true God, and I'm the God over everything. God is not afraid of coronavirus. He's not afraid of cancer. He's not afraid of AIDS. He's not afraid of any kind of request that you come to him. He is a God who is over all of these things. There is only, there might be many problems, but there is only one name under heaven. Amen? And I, they all bow to the name of Jesus. They all bow to the name of Jesus. doesn't matter what the problem is. It is Jesus that we call on. He's a God over everything. I'm too lazy to be a pagan. I couldn't remember all those gods and everything they want. Amen. I just need one God. Amen. Amen. Well, also, we have financial needs. Who's ever had a financial need? I, God, I need you to come through on this need now. Like yesterday. Yesterday midnight. It was, we're already late. I need you to do something. Right? But your word says that he owns a cattle of a thousand hills. That's pretty rich. Right? Your word also says that he shall supply all of my need according to the economy. God shall supply all of my need according to what's in my bank account. I know that ain't the truth. Amen? God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. The Bible is boasting that your God is a rich God and he can supply any financial need that you have. Amen? You just call on him in faith, and he will come through and answer and meet any need that you have. Physical. Physical needs. Financial needs. And now what about spiritual needs? The greatest miracle spiritually was Jesus Christ dying on the cross and his resurrection. Now, growing up, we focus a lot about the, the cross, and we should. Uh, but I didn't, I don't know about you, but I didn't hear a lot of teaching on the resurrection. And actually, I would read things in the scripture, and I didn't quite understand why we're justified by the resurrection. And here's what that means. The cross and the plan for the cross was to atone for your sins. The resurrection was proof that the cross had worked. It was proof that the blood was enough. It was proof that he reigned over death, hell, and sin. Amen. Anything that you need spiritually, you go to him, Jesus Christ, and he will thank the needs. And the resurrection is proof that the power of his blood was enough to conquer everything that you needed spiritually. Amen. Who has somebody that's deep in sin that you know, maybe it's a family member or a friend, and they're lost in the world. It doesn't matter how deep and how gross the sin is. The blood of Jesus is enough. 
And the resurrection of Jesus Christ was proof that it is enough, that he reigns over sin, death, and hell. Amen? He reigns over all that. Is sin much more abounds, is sin abounds so much more does grace abound. That means our filthiness, now, as bad as we can be, is erased and cleansed by how holy he is and his holy blood. Amen? And I asked you earlier, if who had an Eden's house and hands went up. I'm going to challenge you in this moment right now. If you have a need, it's important to respond, amen, to the word of God. That's why I still like altars in church. And I believe, I'm not saying that people can't receive in their seats, but what happens at the altar is, is you're humbling yourself before God. And you're saying, I can't do this without you. You're being honest before God and before man that I need you. And God cannot resist you if you humble yourself before him. If you could have met this need when you raised that hand about that need, if you could have met it, you would have already done it. If it was a $100 problem and you had $500, you'd have been okay. That's not the situation. It is a need that goes beyond your strength and beyond your resources, beyond your capability. It's a need that only God can handle. And that's okay. That's okay. And you know why it's okay? It's because of the nature and character of who our Father is. That He takes care of His children. Jesus said this. He said, if you being evil know how to take care of your children, how much more does your Heavenly Father know how to take care of you? Would you, if your child came to you and said, I have a need, would you not meet it? You would do anything in your power to meet the needs of your children. Your heavenly father is that and much more. Hungering and desiring that his children call on him and he will come and meet their needs. God is two things. He is willing and he is able. He is willing and he is able. And you can go ahead and play something for me in the background if you would. But if you raised your hand this morning and you said, hey, I have a need, I challenge you right now to come to the altar right now and we can pray over you right now concerning that need. And again, it doesn't matter what the need is. It doesn't matter how big or small in your eyes. It doesn't matter if it's a physical need, if it's a financial need, if it's spiritual need. God can meet any need. Amen. He's the all-sufficient one, regardless of the issue, regardless of the turmoil. Amen. So I challenge you, come. Come to the altar. The altar is where he meets your need. The altar is where he wants to hear your prayer. The altar is, the altar is where we humble ourselves and say, God, I need you. God, I need you. I need you to come through for this. I need you to come through for my family. I need you to come through for my home. Hallelujah. I need you to come through on my finances. I, I've, I've, I've exhausted every aspect and every avenue. I've exhausted all these options. I need you. And I'm thankful this morning we have a God, hallelujah, who loves us, who attends to our cry. That's one of my most favorite passages in the book of Psalms. Is when David said, I cried in my prayers went into your ear. They didn't hit the ceiling. They didn't get lost in space. When I cried and I prayed to you, you heard what I cried and cried out to you. You heard my prayer. And more than that, you saw my need before I even I got to it. Just like in this passage in Genesis chapter 1, he already made provision before they even got there. He made provision for Adam before Adam was even there. He made provision for Abraham before Abraham got to the top of the mountain. The provision was already there waiting. And God's going to give you one of two things. He's going to either show you the provision right away, or he's going to give you the strength this morning to keep walking until you get to that point. Amen? He's give you the strength to keep walking, or he's going to show you something.
focus on the provision, but guess what? Where there's provision, there's also a promise. Amen? Where there is a provision, there's a promise. And I want you to stand on the promises. Because as long as you're standing on the promises, you'll receive the provision. Amen? Provision. Promise. Great word. Great word. I, I believe the Lord is going to do some things in these lives up here. I mean, I just, I just felt the Spirit of God. It's powerful. Amen. And if you need something in your life, don't hesitate. Call on the Lord. He's already made a way. Already made a way. The Bible says he made a way where there seems to be no way. It's already been provided for you. Hallelujah. Y'all go ahead and sing that one more time. I'm going to take a minute, and then I got something special I'm going to do for one of our young ladies this morning. I've seen you move.
God. Hallelujah. How many has ever lived by faith? Amen. I, I remember when my wife and I, we got voted in as youth directors for the East Texas District. And I remember what we left behind to go do the job. I quit Exxon. Great job working in the refinery to go live by faith. When you become a district youth director, you don't have a set salary. You live by what people give you. And sometimes it's disappointing because you'll go to a church and you'll walk out thinking, wow, I've driven miles to go cover a pastor's church, paid for my own hotel room to receive $30 and buy my own lunch negative went in the negative to do it but you live by faith and I remember times going to youth rallies and thinking man tonight's going to be rough there was this one youth rally in particular my wife and I went to and we were struggling we had to go to one of those national conventions and we didn't have much money and I told my wife in the car going to the rally I said honey if we can believe God for five dollars why can't we believe him for five hundred Right? I wish I'd have said 50,000. So we get, to the, we get to the rally, and my wife always counted the offerings. She's down there crying, and I'm thinking, I'm trying to preach and close the service, and she's crying. I'm thinking, man, I wonder who said something to her, you know? You know, that's the first thought that comes in your mind when you're dealing with pastors and churches, and there's always, there's always complaining, you know. You'll, you'll figure that out, Brother Hatcher. But what she was crying about is there was a church that had like three kids in their church and they had a fundraiser all month. And they took money up. And their offering from their church was $505 to the penny. Amen. And, and, and so in times when you live by faith, you don't know what's going to happen. You just have to stand on the promise. Some of y'all need to realize that, that there's provision, and you're worried about the provision. Don't worry about that. Stand on the promise. Because when you stand on the promise, the provision will come. Great word, Brother Ash. Let's give our district youth directors a great hand. Very impressed with the word of God this morning. And uh, we appreciate them. And so be praying for them as they travel. Can we just stretch our hands that way and pray over them that God would be with them in this journey? Father, we love love you. And God, we thank you for the appointment that you have made with brother and sister Hatcher and their boys, their kids, Lord. And God, we pray you go with them, that you protect them, God, but most importantly, you meet their needs. God, it's a sacrifice to serve, but it's also a blessing to serve. And God, we pray that you meet them at their need each and every day. God, as they travel the miles, keep them safe, watch over them, and God bless those kids in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to be seated for a moment. We have another special thing I need to do for our, our youth director, our local youth directors, our youth pastor's daughter, the oldest daughter. Sierra, come here, baby. Sierra's got a birthday coming up Friday. It seems like all their kids' birthdays are in October. I mean, the October is covered with the next time I'm going to have to interview better and make sure their family is spread out in birthdays. But... Like, October is covered, and she's the first one October 1st. So what we're going to do is, Donnie, can you get her a little offering bag? We're going to let you just bless her with an offering this morning, a birthday offering. You can give it to her. She can carry it. You give it, it. Yeah. What do you do with it? Well, what do we normally do with those bags? Carry it around. So you think it would be better if you carry it around or stand here? 
I think they're telling you if you carry it around, you might get more money. So if you got an offering for her, just lift it up. She'll come around and give it. I believe she's going to be 13. 13 Friday. We had another one, but we'll get them next Sunday. I'd like to spread it out so they get more, so they don't have to split it. Amen. Praise God. I see money in the back. Hallelujah. Oh, and if you have change for the men, I want you to bring your change up for the men. Bring me the bucket, honey. That's the men's bucket. If you got change, just, just raise it up. My wife will come by and get that, too. That's, we're going to set some buckets up here as soon as we... We can. Some people are working on them. We're going to have a men's and a women's. This change just goes for the building fund to, to do some things that we want to get done around the church, and we appreciate that. Y'all can just bring it up here this morning. That's fine. We're, we're going to go ahead and stand and be dismissed as soon as Sierra gets done. Guys, come back 6 o'clock tonight for the youth rally. God will bless you uh, for all that you do. It's good to have our pastors from Texas City here, um, Matthew and Emily. Um, I was driving around in Highlands yesterday, and I seen where they got the name of their church from. It was a restoration church over in Highlands yesterday, but <laughs> we're looking forward to what that meant. If you haven't seen the pictures of the church that they're working on, get with Matthew, get with Emily. They got some pictures of the sanctuary. It is looking awesome, awesome, awesome. And I know, Matthew, when are you going to have the opening service? Do you know yet? About a month away, and I think you said you were going to do it on Saturday, right, or did you change your mind? Were you going to do it on Saturday, or were you going to do it on Sunday? I forgot what you told me. Okay, so we won't be going. Everybody just stay home that Sunday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, we love you guys. All right, Jake Hands, be friendly. You're dismissed this morning. God bless you.